whacking my hairs away with the weed whacker trimmer from Manscaped. Did you know this baby has skin safe technology to reduce painful tugs and snags? And it's waterproof. Now, if you don't mind, Camille, a little privacy. Their careers end, you know, earlier than they should have. The Peterborough native Cody Crowley really excelling in the sport of boxing. For such a simple fact that, you know, they hurt their hands. It's just sometimes the equipment doesn't work appropriately or how it should work. The gloves are one of the most important tools to boxing. Um, it protects your hands and, and pretty much your career. I mean, if you can't punch, then um, you can't fight. So, you know, the importance of having a great glove and a, uh, a great quality glove is, um, is, is everything when it comes to boxing. When I first came across USG, I thought it was just going to be another glove. The moment I put my hand in it, it felt like I've been using that glove for a while. When I would go and punch hard on the bag or on the pads, it suction right to my fist and it secured all the way up my wrist. And I just haven't felt a, a feeling like that in a glove um, ever. When you get a USG glove and it's fresh and it's new, it's comfortable. USG provides one of the best gloves that we've seen today. It's not only it, it does it protect the hands, it, but it's also very comfortable to uh, wear. USG gloves is, is like they're already broken in, but they're new. You know, I'm pretty happy with the USG and that's my glove of choice right now. Be the hero of your own movie. If your life was a movie and it started now, forget about whatever financial disasters you've had, personal failures, relationship failures. What would the hero of your life's movie do right now? Do that. Do those things. We define ourselves far too often by our past failures. We look at our past and we say, well, that's me. That's not you. You are this person right now. You're the person who's learned from those failures. And you can choose to be the hero of your own movie right now. Write down your goals. Write down things you want to improve. Write down things you won't tolerate from yourself. Write down things that you've done in the past that you never want to see yourself do again. And go forth from here as the hero of your own movie. Build momentum. Build confidence and momentum with each good decision that you make from here on out. You can do it. Anyone can do it. We live in unique times. We live in one of the rarest times in human history where you can choose almost all the input that comes your way. Whether it's the movies that you watch, the books you read, the podcasts you listen to, you can choose to be inspired. Do that. Do that. And be the hero of your own movie. Welcome back to the Final Shot Podcast. Today, the podcast, well, actually, I'm going to introduce my guest first. Ladies and gentlemen, I was supposed to have an MMA legend on today. Um, he's the man that made the spinning back fist famous. He knocked out Matt Serra in 2001 with a spinning back fist. His name is Mr. International Shoney Carter, but he no-showed me that motherfucker. So I called in one of the homies, one of my buddies, Brady Leovold, former professional hockey player, now professional podcaster. He's got his own foundation. He's doing all kinds of crazy shit. We're going to talk about it, but uh, let me get through my sponsors first. Um, we're brought to you by USG Canada. They make some of the most badass walkout gear of all time. Like All of my sponsors are on here, but there's no patches. It's all subliminally printed into the fabric. So there's no extra weight on your shorts. They also make some fantastic boxing gloves. And you can get a pair on there that I designed. They're called the X-Series. Apparently they're a big hit. People like them. So check them out. Hit up my boy Howie. Uh, his email is howie at usgcanada.com. Use the promo code the final shot, and you're going to save 20% on your purchase. We're also brought to you by Sovereign Extracts. And Brady, I actually have a box here with your name on it. Holy shit, Tanner. So Another one. We've got a whole bunch of goodies in here for you. We've got tips. 
We've got drops. We've got tinnature. We've got some other... What the fuck? we got some dab shit in here. We've got all kinds of stuff. But it's all healthy, and it's all... <laughs> there goes the buzzer. Sorry, man. I had to do that. But this whole box I've had sitting here for you for a month. Holy shit. Um, I don't know your address, so I haven't been able to ship it. Well, that address on the box, uh, Taylor, my girlfriend's still living there, but you know, I'll give you the new address because, uh, I'm staying at a new place. I've been kind of going through a lot, but man, that's awesome. Uh, big shout out to sovereign because, uh, Tanner, you sent me a couple packages before and, uh, that was my first experience with, you know, CBD and that, that sort of stuff. So one, first off, man, thank you so much. Um, because you know, it, as you know, man, um, that stuff, uh, certainly, man, it's a, it's a life changer, a game changer. Um, and, uh, sovereign man, like that stuff is, is the best on the market as far as I'm concerned. It's great. A there's no, there's no fucking around with sovereign extracts. Um, they're actually going, you're going to be able to buy sovereign extracts on the USG website. That's going to launch later this month. And if you use the promo code, the bad guy, you're going to save 10% off your purchase and you're going to get that shit delivered right to your door. Which is awesome. Yeah, that's sick. We're also that's brought sick. to you by TKO Beards, some of the best beard oil on the market. And I've actually got something here for you because you have that fantastic mustache. We have yeah. some mustache wax or beard wax. Okay. I'm going to send you this I need one. that. I'm going to send you this one. This one's called TKO. And it smells fantastic. I, I bet you your girlfriend's going to love it. <laughs> yeah, probably, man. She actually likes the mustache, surprisingly. She's like the only girl, maybe because she thinks all the other girls hate it. I have no idea. I mean, that's why she likes it. But, hey, it's all that matters. She likes it. Whatever. You put this on and you ask her if she wants a mustache ride. The fucking answer is yes, 100% of the time. That's going in that's the box. That's right, buddy. That's in the box. Thank you, man. Uh, last. Oh, we got two more sponsors. Sorry. Uh, newer sponsor for us. Have you ever seen one of these, Brady? No. This is called a Fleshlight. Do you know what a okay. flashlight is? Of course. Now we're getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, new sponsor. So if you guys are, you're working, you're ugly as shit, you got calluses all over your hands, and you don't want to touch yourself and you can't get anybody else to touch you, get one of these things. It's a flashlight. They're fantastic. They've got the big one. This is the, this is the mothership of, of, the, of their products. They've also got something called a quick shot which you can keep in your pocket. <laughs> okay. But if you're a freak and you want to get one of these things, go to their website, use the promo code, the final shot, and you're going to save some money on your purchase. Last but not least, our last sponsor today has been our first sponsor of all time, and that's onit.com. So if you go to www.onit.com forward slash TFS podcast and you make a purchase on the website, doesn't matter what the fuck you buy. You're going to save 15% on your purchase. They've got Alpha Brain, Shroom Tech Sport, maces, battle ropes, elk bars, t-shirts, coffee mugs, camping shit, anything you want uh, when it comes to human optimization, onit.com. Check them out. Use the promo code TFS Podcast and save 10% or 15%. Sorry, I lied. Brady, what the fuck are you doing? What's going on? Man, honestly, uh, quite a bit, man. Uh, on the move here again. Fuck, I've been all over the place, just trying to trying to lay some roots down, man. Uh, been out of the been out of jail for over a year. November thirteenth was a year. I'm coming up on a year clean off of all hard drugs, um, so that's exciting. I had a baby in October. Um, lots on the go, Tanner. Lots on the go. Congratulations on the birth of your daughter. That's amazing, Vada. Veda, yeah. Veda? Yeah, Veda. Yeah, it looks like Veda, but Veda, the story is, is like, you know the movie uh, My Girl, Macaulay Culkin, he gets stung by the bees, he dies, the girl, the movie called My Girl, well, me and Taylor were watching that, and we're like, hey, that's the girl, the little girl's name in it, and that we, we rolled with it, and uh, it, we love it, and uh, she's just uh, been a, just a blessing, man. I never would have thought, you know, um, would have another baby, um, and certainly... Uh, coming up on a year clean. I mean, shit, I, I'll be honest. I've gotten to this point twice in my life, like 11 months, twice, I think 10 months and then 11 months. And actually the, the time 11 months is when I was in, in uh, when I met Braidwood and he was sort of like the one pushing me through that shit. And, uh, and, and, you know, 11 months and then I sort of sabotage it. So I've actually gotten 
past, I'm like 11 and a half months. I've, I've surpassed that last, like the 11 month mark. So, I mean, I'm getting closer to the year, man. That's, that's all I'm doing. Just trying to survive. I'm using my cannabis and, and the CBD stuff that you send out. And, and honestly, uh, I can't really talk too much about it, Tanner, but, um, psilocybin. Okay. Um, look for some, I'll tell you about it after, but just everybody watching, look for, uh, look for some hockey players talking about using psilocybin on a pretty major, uh, sports documentary channel. Uh, in the early spring, you might see me on it as well, but uh, no promises. So it was just a little hint there. Before I get into the boxing talk, uh, I just want to touch a little bit on your story. Um, what you've created for yourself right now is an amazing network of people. And now you're accountable. You have a whole yeah. bunch of people that are going to check you if you do something stupid. And I'm one of them. Yeah, man. And yeah, I know. I think that's probably one of the best things you could have done was start a podcast. Because now you have people paying attention to what you're doing. You're having yeah. big names like Nick Kiprios and, and guys like that that are that are encouraging you to do better in life. And uh, yeah. just keep I just little word of encouragement. Just keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, man. Hey, before you get into it, I don't know if you saw, um, but I had Bob Probert's wife on my podcast, yep. Danny Probert, and. Uh, she actually agreed. She, she challenged me. She's like, Hey, if you get your motorcycle license for one year, you can ride Bob Probert's Harley in the Bob Probert Memorial ride. Yeah, bro. I'll send you this straight up. She said it on my podcast more than once. She's been texting me. I get to ride Bob Probert's Harley in the fucking Bob Probert Memorial ride. So to me, that's pretty cool, man. Like you said, you nailed it though. You nailed it, man. I got so many people checking up on me. Um, and, uh, so many people wrote like, seriously looking at me, encouraging me being like, Hey, thanks for sharing your story. You inspire me this and that. It's like, man, I can't let any of these people down. So, you know, like the stresses of life still happen, but I don't even have time to think about using drugs, man. Seriously. And what a waste of time. Such a waste of time. <laughs> Holy shit. What a waste of time. Jails, fucking streets, everything else. It's, it's a, it's a ticket to nowhere, man. It's a ticket to nowhere. <laughs> okay. We're going to get into it in a little bit again, but I got to run through some boxing stuff. Cause I'm late to the dance. I bought a house. I had to redo a studio. I had to do a whole bunch of shit. I've been gone for two months. I, I miss talking about a whole bunch of stuff. I of the tiger management. They've been kind of like ride or die for me. They, they help me out. I help them out. Um, they have a tournament going on called the four aces tournament. The first part of it happened. Steve Claggett fought a gentleman named, uh, his last name is Tayru. That was a bully beatdown. Um, if I'll send you my uh, my punching grace subscription, don't get mad at me. I have the tiger for that, but I want you to watch this fight because it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Um, Junior Ulysses made a comeback in a, in a huge way against G Time, uh, Matthew Germain, and Teru and Germain are both injured right now from those fights, so we don't really know what's going to happen. I'm guessing they're going to wait because Quebec's on a four week lockdown right now. Anyway, they can't do anything. Um, so we're going to find out over the next couple of months, what's going to happen with this tournament, but what an amazing thing that they're doing. Um, especially when we've got junior Ulysses and Steve Claggett, these guys have already fought twice. They're one and one and they're on either end of the bracket. So they got to keep winning to meet. And yeah. they're the two best guys in it. Steve's number one, junior Ulysses, number two, Manny Montreal's not going to like that. I know but whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> is that is that you saying number one he's number two or is that like uh is that like solidified in the rankings or like people are is there a discrepancy there or is one better than the other record wise um steve steve claggett has been around for a really long time his yeah. record's not salty but uh he does have some losses on there to some really good guys and ulysses doesn't have quite the resume that steve does in professional boxing but ulysses is amazing yeah. So he's fought. Yeah, no, I know both. I'm I'm familiar with both. Like like you and I talk. Like I I love fighting, man. I was yeah. I fought lots in hockey. I try to follow uh fighting as much as I can, but um, you know, it, it's hard out, you know, if you don't have those inner connections and getting to the to the events, man. I'm just waiting to uh to get to some of these live events once COVID lifts. Right. Yeah. Well, what I would like to happen is uh, I would be able to attend a couple of these events and do some more commentary. I've done commentary for Eye of the Tiger before. What a fun time that is. But uh, there was another fight on the card that was intriguing to me, 
and it's got a it's, it's a personal reason why but it was uh kung fu panda versus j bird i don't know how to pronounce this guy's actual last name it's called b-y-a-r-d but i'm calling him a bird anyway <laughs> um what a terrible fight uh it was th- these guys i get it you're coming in covid times it's hard with the cardio but fuck you got to make an effort um kung fu panda ended up getting the decision knocked this guy down in the first round i'm actually going to circle back to this fight in a couple minutes but uh i the tiger management always puts on a fantastic card and if you're not watching them on punchinggrace.com i'm super disappointed it's cheap it's 33 dollars for three months you get live 11 bucks a month, 11 bucks a month. You get live events. You can watch the whole library on their documentaries. Um, if you want to see my daughter, she's on one of those documentaries, actually the Adam, the boogeyman Braidwood documentary that's on there. Okay. Le boogeyman. You can see, watch- I didn't even, I'm now you told me that I'm going to have to get my subscription as soon as the show's over just to see that. Cause he's my boy. Right. So like, I didn't even know it was on there. Now I got to check it out. So you just sold one. There you go. $11 a month is cheap as shit. It's cheap as shit, man. It's just like Netflix, but it's actually real live entertainment. And here's the amazing part. Uh, about you know, it. not always live. You can go back, yeah. but you know what I mean? Real fucking people like, you know, yeah. putting their, their fucking balls on the line. That's what we love to see, right? It is. And the the great thing about it is when COVID's not around, I the Tigers putting on shows fucking almost bi-weekly. So there's tons of yeah. boxing you can watch. Um, Mike Tyson made a comeback to boxing recently. I don't know if you watched it. It was on Trilla. Um, I'm a sucker for Mike Tyson. I love the guy. He's amazing. Yeah, me too. And, uh, yes. Yeah. But you, you toss him in there with Roy Jones Jr. Uh, people are saying there's a gentleman's thing. These guys are fucking 50. Of course, they're not going to go there and try to kill each other. If you tuned in and you thought there was going to be a knockout, you're an idiot. I'm sorry, <laughs> you're dumb. But what they did was they put on a six round or an eight round exhibition that was fun to watch. The body shots yeah. were real as shit. But yeah, the, man. The, the, I, head, the head shots were pulled. It is what it is. I actually listen, Tanner. I, I I watched it after. I didn't watch it live, but I've seen it. And uh, I'll be honest, I was surprised. I thought. I was actually quite surprised. Listen, people want to say whatever they want to say, but like you said, you remember they're 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 fucking way out of their prime, way out of their prime. And you know what? Did Roy look a little bit tired? Sure, he did. But I thought Mike, man, for for all the shit he's gone through and and everything, and, and man, I thought he looked sharp for for as, as sharp as he could be. Like, what what more do people want from him right now? He looked amazing. Fifty four yeah. years old. He was three hundred pounds not a year ago. Cuts down, like, hey, there's Mexican supplements involved. No big deal. We don't care. We all know it's, it is, you're 50 fucking four. We get it. Yeah. We don't care. But he looked amazing. His, yeah. his, his peekaboo boxing style was still there where he was moving, slipping punches. I'm pretty sure he broke Roy's ribs, though. <laughs> He still punched hard, man. I he still got that. He still got that punch. Maybe not like he did, but fuck, man. He's. I wouldn't want to get take a rib shot by him. I don't know about you. Fuck no. Fuck I that. I got better fuck things that. to do with my time. <laughs> but uh, there was there was some there's some funny stuff that went on that card. We'll start with the Badu Jack fight. I don't know if you watched that one, but Badu Jack is a legit boxer, like world class top 10 legit boxer he fought a guy that shouldn't have been in the ring that night period he it was a fucking beat down um it, it, this is kind of what we're going to get with these kind of youtube spin-off boxing things but the jacob paul i'm calling him jacob because i, I don't want to call him jake i fuck i don't like this guy he, he's entertaining yeah. but fuck me jacob stop like, if you want to fight YouTube people, fight YouTube people. If you want to fight NBA basketball players that train for three months, bro, you've been training in boxing for three years. Of course, you're going to win. Yeah. Like, I don't care that <laughs> Nate Robertson's one of the best athletes on the planet. He's not a fighter. Yeah. And if you've seen basketball players, they get fucking pushed. They fall over, man. Like I saw a video the other day, basketball compared to hockey. And it was just, I laughed, man. Like these guys, like, so if you expected that guy to get in there and like, come on, man. Like, what do you think? Can I ask you, Tanner? What did you think? Like, honestly, aside, take Nate out of it. The fact that he trained for three months, 
What did you think of Jake Paul's boxing skills? He doesn't get 30 seconds in a round with me. <laughs> Not Seriously, a right? But the, the shitty part is, is in his world, I'm a nobody. Yeah. He ain't going to fight me. He's going to call out grapplers. And he's going to call out NBA guys, maybe some MLB. Hey, can we get Mark McGuire? Mark McGuire. Sammy's- well, you know who he did call out? You know he called out like a Vander Kane and Ryan Reeves in the NHL. Like he did. He's he's turned out he's trying to fight NHL players. And I'll tell you, if he gets in the ring with a Vander Kane, who I well, dislike pretty much just as much as I dislike Jake Paul, to be honest, because I played against a Vander. He's from Vancouver. He's from the same area I am. He's a cocky um, whatever. He's good at hockey, but uh, he's – He's a fucking tough kid. He, he boxes. He's been boxing his whole life. So, you know what? And uh, I would like to, I would love to see that fight. I really would. Jake Paul, you want to call out an NHL guy? Call out Colton Orr. <laughs> no doubt. Call out Marty McSorley. He's like 50, but he'll still beat your ass. <laughs> call out Ty Domi. Yeah. Any of these? No kidding. Call out somebody that's no like. Call out Ovechkin. Ovechkin can fight. I know he can. He's a beast. That's sell pay per views too, like a motherfucker. I don't want to give this guy any more money though. That, no <laughs> man. I have to respect the hustle. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, what he does, he goes out. He's a he's a multi millionaire. I gotta respect the yeah, hustle. And he's and and you have to remember, Tanner. He really is. Uh, he was a nobody, right? Like he's a YouTube star that that came from from where and. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess at the end of the day, you look at it too. I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll say the same thing. I, I do respect his hustle too. As somebody that's trying to do similar things, not in the same way with the same attitude, trying to build something like that and get a following, you know, good for him, man. He, he did it and uh, he's doing well. Um, but I mean, come on, like there comes a time where you know, do you still have to keep up that? Sh- I don't know, man. It's it is what it is. We'll get off it because I don't want to give him any more press with my fucking <laughs> viewers than, than he's going to get on his own shit. Um, but uh, there's a guy, Brennan Shaw, uh, Fighter in the Kids podcast, and uh, Chael Sonnen um, does another podcast. You're welcome. Both of them former UFC fighters. Chael Sonnen, obviously more popular, one of the best trash talkers of all time. They got into a little bit of a back and forth where Joe Rogan got involved too, where Joe Rogan had... So there's a, what the hell is his name now? Fuck. I can't remember. Anyway, so what 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 had happened is Joe Rogan had outed some, it's called like locker room talk a little bit about a guy's yeah. gimmick that he uses. So his name is Colby Covington. Sorry. Um, so long story short, Colby Covington was on, on the cusp of getting cut from the UFC because he wasn't selling pay-per-views. The guy, the guy doesn't lose very often, maybe three times. Yeah. So he created a persona, started talking shit, wearing a mega hat, wearing cheap polyester suits and acting like a cunt. Yeah. Guess what? It worked. <laughs> One of the biggest stars in the sport right now, Colby Covington. Joe Rogan goes on his podcast and says, uh, well, this guy that you're seeing on camera is not real. This is the gimmick yeah. so that he could keep his job. So, Back in the days of the WWF, there was something called kayfabe, where you're a wrestler, you're out in public, you stay in character. Colby Covington did this in public. Yeah. He's wearing the suits and the hat and acting like a jackass. Perfect. Because nobody knows any yeah. different. Yeah. But he got outed. Yeah. So Chael Sonnen, who's the master gimmick maker, he made the uh, the American badass. He's the he uh, He contacted Razor Ramon to use the name The Bad Guy. I had mine given to me. I didn't give myself the yeah. name of the bad guy. Uh, uh, yeah. A former wrestling promoter, Dennis Herman, gave me that nickname. Okay. But he contacted Razor to see if he could use that nickname. So Chael's a master at this kind of stuff, and he, he got mad, physically mad, that he got yeah. outed on a podcast, and Joe Rogan's the biggest podcast on the planet. Yep. I agree. I agree too, hundred percent. You can't tell you can't tell people that because this is what's making this guy money. And and you know what I mean it's yeah it's his livelihood too and also what it does is now it's you know it's going to create doubt for anybody else that has anything like that. People are going to start questioning everybody else and like you know uh, 
And it's, it's kind of unfortunate um, because people seem to forget that, you know, these people are, are people at the end of the day. You know what I mean? We just, you know, we, we, we watch them on TV and we, you know, in, I wonder why Joe Rogan did that. Like he's, you'd think he would want to, um, you know, maybe be on the same side as a guy like that, being on the same team. Like, Hey man, I got you. Don't worry. That's what I would be like. You know what I mean? Right. So Brennan Schaub goes, so this circles back to Trilla. Brennan Schaub goes on his podcast and goes, well, if you guys watched that fight and thought it was real, then you're stupid. It was a gentleman's bet, a gentleman's agreement. Well, of course we know that. We don't want you to say it, though. Like, why do you why do you say it? I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's got no place for me. That's got no place, uh, you know, like, what, what do they gain out of saying something like that is my question. Absolutely nothing. Just to maybe That's look right. that you're right or you're, you're making some kind of headline. But it... it it's different than, than somebody saying online that I'm an asshole. Everybody knows I'm an asshole. I, I'm an asshole. I know it. Everybody yeah. knows. <laughs> but these guys, these guys went out there, sold 1.6 million pay-per-views. That's like the eighth biggest paper, or the fourth biggest pay-per-view gate of all time. Yeah. Why hate on it? I think they should. Because it wasn't it. you that did it? Because it wasn't them that did it, right? I, guess. I think they should keep doing it. I don't think they should put the YouTube guys on, but like if you want to do, like yeah, a, it's a little bit much for me. You know, like beer league old men, old men hockey. If you want to do that in boxing, let's fucking yeah. load it up with the legends. Let's get let's get Buster Douglas. <laughs> That's actually a sick idea. Let's get Holyfield. Buster Douglas. Holy. Let's let's dust the dirt off a of Butterbean and let him knock the shit out of somebody. Butterbean, oh my god. Why not? Where is Butterbean these days? Holy shit. He resurfaced a couple weeks Butter ago. Butterbean. He resurfaced a couple weeks ago and uh, shouted Come out on. one of my buddies. Yeah, he's like, because uh, one of my friends, Ryan Rizicki, was calling it Jake Paul. Now, Ryan Rizicki is a legitimate, professional, bad motherfucker. This guy's had th- 12 or 13 fights. None of them have gone past the third round, and they're all ended up in a knockout. Like I'm not talking TKO. I'm talking about stone cold, stiff on the zombie fucking shit. Bad motherfucker. Butterbean yeah. shows up online and says, "Hey, Jake Paul, fight this guy, but I bet you you won't, cause he'll fucking kill you." And it's true. That's what he said. Basically, yeah. I, I might add it in That's a couple. Butterbean came out of nowhere, but is what it add. is. How old Butterbean's Butterbean's fifty four. Like he he's still got it, man. I just looked him up. He's only fifty four. He could still get in there and bang. What's he weigh though? That's my question. Because he's a big fella when he was fighting. If well, he, that's I bet you he's drop weight. Probably doesn't tell you a weight class. So. He's a big boy, man. <laughs> he's huge. But no, you can't see none of it. But when he when he hit people, he put them out. Old. It was over. Yeah. Damn right he did. Uh, moving. I don't want to get onto this yeah, Trilla right. stuff anymore. Um, Boogeyman. Boogeyman's ready to go. He's looking for a fight. Um, he, Come on. He has a name in mind, and there's a, a gentleman that opened up a new boxing promotion in Quebec. Jan Pellerin, I believe his name is. And there's a, a former hockey guy, I think, running around out there that he might want to fight. I can't say his name. W. Come w, on. W H. I'll tell you off the air. W H L or uh, maybe not. Might have been a. Well, he was a junior hockey guy like you. Ah, uh, I know. Come on, I think I know who you're talking about. We're not. We're not. We don't even have to say his name. I think I know who you're talking about. But that'd be fuck, man. I, I'm. Uh, I'm a hockey guy, but I'm riding with uh, the boogeyman on this one all day. Well, it's funny because if you guys go through my Instagram feed to about two years ago, you will see that I called him out and then he blocked me. So. I don't know if it'll happen. <laughs> uh, so hopefully Adam That's can hilarious. get that fight because I'd love to see it. I'd love to see him get back in the ring and do work. Uh, Ryan, the yeah, real man. deal. Ford. I think he's chomping at the bit. Oh, yeah, chomping. Ryan, the real deal. Ford. Let me tell you. Let me tell you about I, Ryan, the real deal. Ford spent a little bit of time in my hometown back in the day. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, he, that was when he was a little bit more rough around the edges and uh, he had quite the reputation. Uh, nobody, 
nobody wanted to fuck with Ryan, the real deal Ford. I'll tell you that much. Um, and, and obviously, you know, you can see what he, what he does in the ring. Right. So I'll let you get back into what you were saying about him. But I just wanted to say that, um, he was sort of like, uh, he wasn't around for too long, but you know, I got to meet him a couple of times. I was pretty young at the time. I mean, in my teens there, but like, I just remember being like, yeah, I probably don't piss this guy off. I've been buddies with Ryan for well over a decade now. We've been training partners. He's been, uh, he had a regular spot on the podcast for a while. He was a fantastic individual family guy, uh, does a yeah. lot of lot of yeah. stuff with his kids man i don't know how he does it all but uh ryan tore a bicep mm-hmm. tendon i believe is what it was he went in for surgery motherfuckers back in the gym three weeks later he's like wolverine man we're the same age i don't heal that fast but he, he wants to fight <laughs> three lions promotion tried to put a fight together with him and ryan Rizicki. now if the money had been right i know for 100 percent that that fight would have happened and i would have paid good fucking money to see that fight i don't know who wins if i'm honest yeah e- either one of them can win um ryan definitely has the experience yeah. advantage with all of his mma stuff he's got the In the grand scheme of things, fighting another Canadian guy for Brian right now doesn't make too much sense only because it's COVID. That's why it makes sense. The guy's been traveling all over the globe. Germany, Russia, Siberia, fucking Poland, Guadalajara. Who fucking knows where he's going? But he's fighting everybody and he's not saying no. (laughs) He got called out by a heavyweight. You get fucking guys a 168 pounder. (laughs) He'll fight you though. Look the fuck out if he's coming. I know, I know, right? That's the thing. I know, I told you, man. He had that reputation even when he was younger, right? Like, it just, yeah, I've watched a lot of his fights over the years just on YouTube and stuff just because, you know, I that was, like, kind of the first kind of fighter that I met, you know what I mean? Like, and he, that was, he was, like, the first guy that I ever met that was, like, actually fighting. He was doing MMA, I think, back in the day or whatever. But, like, yeah, like, so I kind of follow him, and I was just, you know, it's you know, it's nice to see what he's doing now, right? He uh, seems to be finding some success in the fight game, right? And it's nice to see because, uh, you know, I, I know it can be a grind for a lot of these guys, man. Fuck, and, and, you know, you get in there and you put your body on the line, and, and it's not just the fights, Tanner, too, right? It's your training and, and the sparring and, and all of it. It's, you know, I, I just, you know, whenever I talk to, to Adam, you know, the boogeyman there, like, fuck, I see his videos and shit, and he's just like, like, do you ever, like, take a break? Like, you know what I mean? And you can't, right? Because that's what you got to do. So it's a it's a huge, huge commitment. So I hope, it's my hope that these guys, all these guys can, you know, continue to fight, like, whatever, COVID, all of it, so that they can, you know, this is how they, this is how they you know, survive. This is how they pay their bills. Um, not only do I want to see some fights, but I want to see these guys, you know, sustain their livelihood, man, and, and do what they love to do because, you know, they, they deserve to be in there. That is correct. Um, next order of business is my buddy Dario Berdician is looking for a fight. Um, Lex and Matur, the, the fight with Lexan was o- actually offered to Ryan the Real Deal Ford first. Ryan obviously accepted. Um, and then Lexan's camp came back and said no. So I don't know if a contract's been sent to Dario yet, but I know that he will accept that fight via the Tiger management. So let's kind of make that happen. And uh, speaking about... Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about mental health and then we're going to circle into back into fighting a minute. Yeah. Um, during COVID, a lot of people have mental health issues and it's, it's come to my attention that my daughter has had a mental health problem over the last little while. I kind of sat, it, it had to do with eating and, and not wanting to get fat where she yeah. wasn't eating and she's getting headaches and I, I'm not paying attention enough. I'm fucking busy. I'm doing dumb shit. So, I kind of sat down with her the other night and I said, all right, so explain to her what food is. Yeah. And what food is for your body. It's like gasoline for a vehicle. So you need to fuel. So she wants to, to accomplish some things. She wants to be a good volleyball player and she wants to, she's been boxing for a while. Now she wants to take a fight. Okay. I said, all right. The fight's no problem, and I'm glad that you set goals. And we're going to achieve those goals. And what I'm going to let you do now is I'm going to let you set me a goal. And I'm old. 
well, I'm getting old. I'm thirty. I'm thirty eight years old. Uh, as far as I've, I'm concerned, I was retired up until two days ago. <laughs> um, she's she wants me to fight again. Okay. And uh, before I said, <laughs> I said, I told her, I'll anything you said it. You want me to climb a mountain? You want me to run out in front of a car? I'll go do it. I said no. I want you to fight. So then Holy shit. that circles us and I don't stop training either. It's been my life yeah. for 20 years. It, was, it is what it is. So that circles us and it, it can't go down any other way than my way. And I got to call somebody out. Um, <laughs> so we're going to circle back to that fight that happened, that heavyweight fight between Adam Kung Fu Panda and Jay Bird. Now Jay Bird, I don't like. Um, I'll give you a, a short backstory on him a little bit. Um, at 16 yeah, years old, Jay, uh, his actual, his government name is Jared, J-E-R-R-O-D. He's from Nova <laughs> Scotia. Um, at 16 years old, him and his friend broke into a gentleman's house, tied him to a chair, tortured him, burnt him with a blowtorch, and ended up killing him. Wow. Was given life in prison. Uh, seven years later, I believe they were let out because they're youth offenders. Now they've yeah. they've relapsed and gone back in a couple times. I think Jay went back in for eleven years. Jay's now thirty nine years old. I believe he's go probably going to be on parole for the rest of his life. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I can't respect what he did. Yeah. No. Not a chance. Not a chance that's happening. Um. But I don't know why they would let a convicted murderer compete in a contact sport that's so violent. Yeah. It makes no sense. That's crazy to me. That that is crazy to me. I don't It it, it is crazy. So in my twisted way of thinking is I'm gonna call out the guy that doesn't belong. So Jay Bird, I, I would like to pick a fight with you at your earliest convenience. And uh <laughs> I had to do it again, man. That's crazy to me. I'm gonna. I need to be there if you do fight, and if it's if that happens, I'm there, man. The only place I'd like to do it is for Eye of the Tiger, and I'll sweeten the pot a little bit for Camille. Um, you let me knock this guy out on your show. I'll fight your Kung Fu Panda. Oh, Holy shit, Tanner! We'll leave. We'll leave it at that. Call out. Call out's done. We can move on. Um, we can we can get into some hockey talk now because something happened last night on TV that you didn't like. Oh my god! Yeah, I didn't like it at all. I didn't have a problem with it. No. Nah. Fuck. Who gives a shit? Because at the oh, end, oh man, I don't the, like it. At the end of the day, it's like somebody saying, telling me I suck. Okay. Cool, man. I'll see you next year. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can kind of see your point, but my the whole point with me is like when it comes to hockey, like in hockey especially, like will you ever see? This is my question: Will you ever see a team win a Stanley Cup and bring something that looks like a garbage? I don't. I know the backstory. I, I know oh, it's a barrel. We do one barrel at a time. This and that. That's fine. I understand the motivation. I think it's a great ploy by the coach. I really do. Um, I think that that you know that was the team. Um, they understood it. Um, it didn't need to be brought out. And if it did, like, did the Canadian logo really need to be there? Because, you know, they could have just turned it around and ripped it off. Like the, because if it's really about the barrel, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just think that it was kind of, um, you would never see the Canadians do that. I don't think. And, uh, just because the management wouldn't allow it because they're just too smart and they wouldn't want all the bullshit, um, more than anything. Um, you know, I don't really, I don't have a problem with them doing that at all. Like putting whatever they want to do in the dressing room and stuff, the counter. Um, and it did piss me off a little bit, just, you know, not even a little bit. It just pissed me off. And I was just more or less trying to use my platform to fire up the boys. Cause I talked to some of these guys that are going to be on the world junior team next year. And, and I, you know, I taught them, you know what I mean? Like some of these young kids that are playing the OHL and WHL. So I'm just trying to fire them up too, just so they remember it. Um, but yeah, it's a good point, man. You make a good point on that, and uh, hearing it out of your like people have been going at me all day about it. And I'm like, yeah, fuck off, fuck off. I even blocked <laughs> a couple. A couple people blocked me, and this and that. I'm like, ah, I don't care. I'm trying to lose Facebook friends, anyways. I'm busy enough. I got enough messages. Um, but you know, hearing it from you, it's like, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, see you next year. Yeah, I mean that is kind of the way you kind of have to have that thick skin, right? And um, I had a problem actually with Zach Castian. I don't know. If I you want saw to talk that. about that too because I don't know anything about this. I haven't listened to that okay. podcast yet, so we're gonna, we're going to talk about it because it's it's out, right? All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. when they, I I was watching the game live last night and I seen this blue barrel come out. I'm like, what in the flying fuck are they doing with this thing? And then they put it there. I was like, oh shit, motherfucker! All right, like shit talk usually happens on the ice and yeah. we can't hear it because they're not mic'd up they're always i remember when i played hockey i was always, always talking shows calling people bitches and fucking idiots yeah oh yeah me too i was the worst bud it, it was just a, it was just a very vocal non-vocal way of of chirping somebody i thought it was i thought that the the idea behind the barrels was amazing and, yeah and it's a good way for the coach to fire up the team now as for team canada I'm not mad that it came out. I want them to see that shit. Because yeah. there's some kids on that team that are going to be on, and they're going to go home, and they're going to be sad that they lost the game. Realistically, guys, you did fantastic. Absolutely. Did, Silver man. medal? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being second in hockey. No. There's nothing wrong, especially second in the even, world? Yeah, even, you know what, even though the expectation is there, you know what, like, Man, like, th- those guys on the Americans, like, they have a couple kids. Like, that Zgrass kid, man, he was so good the whole tournament, oh, yeah. man. And he's so skilled. And and you know what? I, I That was a thing, Tanner, is, like, for once in my life, um, and not that it's happened a ton of times, but for once in my life, uh, you know, seeing the Americans beat the Canadian, um, I was fine with it. I was like, okay. I was like, they deserved it. Canada played great the whole tournament. It's one game. It comes down to one game. It could have went either way. Canada got, you know, hit a post, didn't go get a break here, didn't get a break there, whatever. That's the way hockey goes. And you accept it and you move on. But as soon as they start bringing that shit out, I'm like, what the hell is really going on right now? <laughs> like, who allowed, who allowed that to happen is my question. Like, there must have been some senior advisor going, hey, maybe – Maybe we just hold off on that, or are they just so excited they won? I have no idea, but I bet you there's some people that are that are uh, getting uh, questioned this today about it. I guarantee it. Hindsight could be 2022, and we might see in the next 48 hours that a, an official apology goes out or something like that. It is a I would I would classify hockey as a gentleman sport. Yeah, um, yep. where there is a lot of shit talk, like boxing is a gentleman sport. We all talk shit. We look at Tyson Fury. <laughs> It's fucking yeah. insane but something <laughs> something will happen with that but uh what i do like if any of these team canada kids are watching this show at, at any point hear this part you guys did fantastic that game last night came down to one period and it was the first period unfortunately the second two periods you guys owned you just yeah. couldn't get in the neutral zone that's it yeah you you outshot them you would hit them. Your puck control time was easily double. Came down to one period. It didn't happen. There's always next year, and there's going to be next year after that, and the next year after that. Hockey ain't going yeah. anywhere. No. and you, That's pretty fucking clear, isn't it? Hockey's not going. The NHL's getting all sorts of exceptions while everybody else is not getting them, and but the NHL's, you know, and all these sports leagues are playing. It's pretty – I mean, it doesn't really surprise me because at the end of the day – do you know how much um, this World Junior Tournament probably helped this nation? I know yeah. I was looking forward to watching the games. I'd fuck, man. I'm losing it. Like, I think more people, like I said this on my podcast too, right? Like, I've spent three years in jail, Tanner. So, like, and just recently, got I've been out for just over a year, like I said earlier. And, like, so I can be locked up and be on a – you want to see a fucking lockdown, you go to segregation in the cell with the lights on 24 hours a day for 19 days straight. That's a fucking lockdown. This isn't a lockdown. You could still go out and whatever, you know. It is what it is. I, you know, COVID, I don't – you know, I've already been ripped on my social media for that too, so I try not to talk about that. But, you know, it's – you know, I'm I'm sure that this has really helped a lot of people. Um, I know people are going, when's the fucking NHL starting or when's the sports? Because now what, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm glad you brought up the, the mental health. And I think, circling back to your daughter, Tanner, like, I think it's super important that you had that conversation with her. And, you know, and I think there's something there. I'm, I'm glad that you said that because it's something that, you know, I talk a lot about mental health. But, you know, I think when it comes to our kids, it becomes, you know, we almost become like, oh, not our kids. Our kids won't want to, and won't ever have to deal with that stuff or whatever. 
Um, I'm trying with the stuff that I'm doing. Certainly, you know, like I, you said, I focus on the hockey world because that's my kind of niche, right? And, and normalizing mental health and, and uh, with different things with Puck Support, the foundation and the company that I started because now it's, I also have like the company and the foundation and it's like Puck Support USA, Puck Support Canada. We're expanding. It's taking off like crazy. Um, and we're excited about that. But it's, it's yeah, man, it's, it's about normalizing it and about talking about it. And I think... You know, yeah, we have all these initiatives, different things. I won't name them. Um, but to me, uh, a lot of them are, you know, a lot of them are smoke and mirrors. Um, but I think what we can do, Tanner, in our own houses is, you know, take care of our loved ones and, and check in with them on a daily basis and say, hey, what's going on? Like, I, I've noticed that people have gotten away from, I, and I don't say all people because, you know, I know there's a lot of families that still do it, but I've noticed that a lot of families don't sit down to dinner like they used to with no TV, with right. no phones, with no everything. And that like, you know, and you're sitting at the dinner table, with no phones, no TV, and you're talking to your kids, to your parents, whatever it is, you know, there's some pretty uh, big revelations that can happen at a, at a dinner table, let's say with your family and those conversations, memories, everything. So if you're sitting there in your cell phone or your kids, I mean, I think we're missing, we're missing the buck there. So I know that I'm going to be enforcing that rule. Um, no cell phones at the dinner table and no TV on. And that may sound like whatever, but guess what? There's enough of the cell phones and I'm guilty of it all day, every day. If you can't put your phone down for half an hour to have a meal with your family at dinner time, um, I think that's a serious problem. I think a lot of the problem right now too is is the kids. Like, there's a lot of mental health issues with kids right now, and yeah, a, a lot of it has to do is that they can't go hang out with their friends or go outside and play with their friends because they're fucking getting arrested at hockey rinks or some bullshit. So they're buried. <laughs> they're buried in their bedrooms and under phones and tablets and 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 they're watching TikTok with these fucking retards on there. Sorry, I'm not allowed to say that word. Idiots on TikTok and the, the there's girls that they see these perfect. people people on there and they want to be just like them yeah, listen i know listen to me very closely if there's any kids watching this one you shouldn't be watching this show two <laughs> all those people that you see on there are fake as fuck and i use yeah. the f word when i because i'm dead serious there's thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars into plastic surgery fake butts fake boobs fake lips botox injections fuck it. name it they got it these people aren't perfect so, yeah. so stop, look at, look at other people, go follow somebody else, go get off it, go outside and climb a tree. No doubt, man. Fuck. Go climb a couple trees, go get into, you know, like, honestly, I would never like, man, I would rather like when I was a kid, I was out like fucking, you know, hitting the golf balls at my elementary school. Like, oops, I broke a window, run away. You know what I mean? Like, Getting into, yeah, sure, I'm not in, encouraging kids to go and do that kind of stuff, but like, man, we got to do that. We were out living as kids. Like, you know, remember going and knock on a kid's, like your friend's door? Hey, is so and so home? Or call, like, you know, that shit's gone now. And you show up to somebody's house, they're like, what the fuck are you doing at my house right now? You didn't text me before you come. You didn't call me before you come. It's yeah. weird, right? And, uh, why didn't you it's just, just FaceTime me? Different times. <laughs> what, yeah. Why didn't like, you just FaceTime me? Would have, would have done the same thing. That's dumb. Yeah. So for Christmas this year, my daughter got walkie talkies. Okay. 40, 40 kilometer range walkie talkies. Now, since we've talked last, I've moved to a very small community. You would know where it is, Vanguard. Okay. Yeah. 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 Very small. I have 135 people in my community here. It's great. I have no neighbors. That's sick. I, I back on to fields. Like, my backyard is fields. My kids can go wherever the fuck they want here. Yeah. Take the walkie-talkie and let me know what you're doing. Are you are you picking up bugs? Are you, what are you doing? Yeah. So, that's sick, man. Yeah. But with this COVID shit, people look out their windows at you like if you're two streets over and they're like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> don't touch my door. Awesome. Don't touch my door. Not. What are you like? You're liking it out there, eh? Uh, this Saskatchewan lifestyle, eh? You liking I, it? I, I'll tell you. But before I moved here, two years before I moved here, I said there's one place in Canada I'll never move to, Saskatchewan. Where did Man, I end look up? Where you are. Saskatchewan. Where do I like yeah. it the best? Saskatchewan. Yeah. It's a good place, man. I spend a lot of, I spend like on and off four years in Swift Current where you were before and just a different, uh, and, and the thing is, is when I was playing for the Broncos, Tanner, like we got to go to a lot of these small communities, yeah. um, 
and and visit. Like I remember going out to Kincaid, Saskatchewan, one day, and um, it it was man like the rink was frozen from the outside temperature. Like, yeah. but it was an indoor rink, but it was frozen. And like the, the the Zamboni was like literally a tractor pulling a thing. And and we had like five guys come to do this skate with the fans. I remember driving there. I got pulled. I got like a thousand dollar ticket because I'm driving this guy's car and he didn't have insurance. We almost didn't make it. It was just a nightmare. But <laughs> I get there and the whole town was there like potluck, din- like lunch, dinner, whatever they call dinner, lunch there. I don't know if you know that super weird but that's okay i I got i got accustomed to it i was like dinner like it's lunch and they're like no that's supper dinner is lunch and supper i'm like okay whatever i Uh, I got you i got you don't (laughs) worry and uh but like they were they all come out and i'll tell you what man these these people um Mm -hmm. in saskatchewan they have a very uh nice way of life and they take care of each other they're they seem to be a lot um kinder it's just not quite as fast paced out there it's slower people don't give a fuck like I can have a shotgun in my truck and nobody cares. Yeah. I I've, I filled my freezer this year with wild meat. I'm not gonna have to buy any meat this year. That's awesome. Yeah. Like I filled every one of my tags this year. That's awesome, man. That's not, so. Awesome. <laughs> not one wasted. Yeah. I I got two white yeah, tail and I got uh, three mule deer. Oh, nice. Yeah. So nice. it was good. It, it's like, amazing. Yeah, man. That's awesome. I mean, like you can't beat that to me. Uh, if you can like live off the land like that as much as possible, you're eating that, you know, like real meat, like yeah. natural meat. Like I'm not even sure what some of this stuff is that they sell at the stores, to be honest, like, That's you know, gross. how long it's been sitting there and salted and this and that and everything else. And so I think, you know, I think that's a, it's another huge component to it. Right. And, and then again, you're outdoors and you're just, you're living, man. You're out there living. And uh, that's what I think a lot of people are missing nowadays. Bro, did you see my IG story? I ran into wild buffalo. Yes, I did see that, man. That was nuts. Look. I meant to message you, actually. That was fucking crazy, man. I've never even seen one in my life ever in person. Le- I, okay, so there's 220 of them in Saskatchewan. i seen 30 of them. That's crazy, man. Now, if you take this into consideration, there's 220 living buffalo in Saskatchewan right now when there used to be 68 million. That's crazy. 68 million? Million. That's crazy, man. And I, I'm driving down a road, and I see two buffalo run across the road, and I, I got out, and I was like, what the fuck? Because there's buffalo farms here. But they have ear tags yeah. and brands, so I'm looking at these things. I'm like, there's no ear tags and brands on these. And then I look west. There's 30 of them. It was a like, holy shit. That's fucking nuts. Probably never see that again, right? Like honestly, like how often? Like you can't. Like that's like a probably like a once in a lifetime thing, unless you're gonna go on some wild buffalo chase and chase them around Canada and follow them around. Like for you just to come across that and. Yeah. And have that on you, that's a pretty special moment, man. Like, you can't, uh, you know, not everybody's going to appreciate that the same way. But uh, it's, you know, that's, you know, it's very special. And I think, you know, especially like you said, the history here in Canada with the buffalo and stuff. It is pretty crazy when you think about how they got eliminated, like, rather quickly. And uh, are they on the up and up? Or are they, like, are you guys, you you can't shoot them or they're endangered, right? We can't shoot them here. No, they're definitely endangered. But uh, we do have a very good um, conservation protocol to enhance. Like four years ago, I think there was 20. So we're doing pretty uh, good. Yeah. Yep. Oh, uh, man, that's, hey, man, you strength in numbers, man. You got to get those numbers up so that I can come see, you know, 30 Buffalo running. Because now <laughs> I want to see that, man. That's fucking nuts. I've never even seen one. I've been, I lived in Canada my whole life. Been I lived in Swift Current for years. I was all doing farm smoking weed down every farm road around swift current you could think of and never saw shit we used to chase deer around swift current actually to be honest (laughs) yeah there's tons here um have you ever been around an animal that makes you feel weird hmm good question yeah i yeah man honestly there was one time there was this beaver that was super super weird um, but not in the, maybe in the sense you're thinking, I just, it felt like he knew more than, uh, 
like he knew more than fuck. I don't know. It just crept me out, man. I was like probably like 12 years old up in, up in like uh, loon Lake, BC cash Creek area. And, uh, yeah, man, it was, I, I can't explain it. It was just fucking us. And he was chewing wood, but he had like these bloody ass teeth and like, but he was like looking at me like, I don't know. I can't explain it, but I want to hear your story. So I got two stories. So the Buffalo one was I got out of the vehicle and I felt like it wasn't a bad feeling, but I didn't exactly feel safe. Yeah. Like you just know that if that thing comes right now, <laughs> even if I'm in the truck, I'm screwed. Yeah. They're huge. Yeah. So the second, how second, big are they? How big? Like were they bigger than you thought? Like even bigger than you thought? Like um, no, the, like they, I've seen them before on farms. Like these ones were obviously bigger because they were wild, which I expected, but I didn't expect it to have like a presence. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean by that? Like there was a there yeah, was like something it, yeah. in the air, and I was I yeah, I wasn't exactly comfortable, but I wasn't scared. Yeah. So the the second one is is I used to live in Vernon, BC. I love Vernon. My dad's got a place on uh, Okanagan Lake out in Parker Cove area. So okay. I love Vernon, man. It's sick, yeah. So I used to live out of town uh, up a road called West Side Road. That's come on, my dad's cabin. You know, then West Side Road. That's where the the Parker Cove. You go down. What the hell is going on? Buffalo know. coming for you? Yeah, hopefully something just fell down. Whatever. But anyway, yeah, West Side Road, that's where I used to live. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. But I was up in the mountain, and I was hunting okay. with my bow. And I knew something, like I could feel something following me. And I knew it for probably an hour. And dusk was coming, and I'm walking home, and I hear two shots. Bam, bam. And I'm like, what in the fuck? Because it was close. Like, close yeah. enough that it was almost to the point where my ears were ringing. So I go back home, I pack my bow up, and the neighbor calls me. The neighbor's a taxidermist. I'm like, uh, he's like, can you stop by? I said, sure, man, no problem, whatever. Do you need something? you need some fucking flour or some eggs or some shit? He's like, no, just stop by. He goes, you were up the mountain. I, saw, I, I go over, he goes, you were up the mountain hunting. I said, yep. Yeah. He goes, you want to see what was following you? Two 140-pound wolves. What? <laughs> Yeah, they were stuffed. Come on, and this guy shot them? Shot both of them. Stuffed them and sold them for fucking thousands of dollars. Just... But he saved your life, too, probably. They were going to kill me, yeah. I would have got one yeah, of them. Yeah, 100%. I would have got That's one crazy. of them. But it's with a bow and an arrow, right? Like, who knows how long it could go for. Those things are crazy too, man. Those big wolves, man. I've always wanted to run into one of those. About not actually, but you know what I mean, right? Like I've always wanted to see them, but not. Maybe safe in a vehicle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I've had uh, I've had actually. You know what? I, I I retract the beaver story. I actually ran into a cougar out in uh, out in Coquitlam there, right? Like, and they're pretty. You know, it wasn't like super close or anything, but it you know it was close enough. Um, where it was like, yeah, I can get the fuck out of here. But luckily yeah. it took off. Um, it was probably like maybe like 200 yards away, I would think. And we saw it, but it was like, you know, like if we try to get away, we're not getting away right now. Like if it comes, like we weren't armed at all. We were hiking, you know what I mean? Like I got a, a half a fucking water bottle full of water and that's right. it. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Uh, I've I've had run-ins with bears and stuff like that before, yeah. but nothing that scared the shit out of me. Uh, I've had I had a run-in with a lynx, but that thing just looked at me and ran. The, what a they're a crazy crazy looking animal. Okay, I want to know about the Zach Cassian bullshit because I'm a Zach Cassian fan. Okay, so let me give you the rundown. So I get a meme. Uh, like a picture uh, with a meme from a friend of mine. He sends it to me because he knows I'm also um, a Zach Cassian fan. I'm a, you know, I like what he does on the ice. I also like his story, a um, little bit of recovery in there, mental health advocate um, and a good hockey player. Plus we're the same birth year. And um, so the meme, uh, it says, it's a picture of him. You can't really see it there, but it says, I'll read it after. It says, I am most excited about getting to turtle that bitch 10 times this season. And, and then it says Zach Cassian on what he thinks about an all Canadian division, most likely, like clearly a joke. It says most likely. So 
I end up sending it to him and being like, ah, oh, like Zach Cassian. Where I'm thinking he's gonna think this is funny because I've seen memes of him that are way worse, way worse. And um, you know, I'm like, this guy would be a dream guest on my podcast. Blah blah blah. He's a puck support warrior, which is like the hoodie I'm wearing right now, which is like a little campaign we have for puck supports. Like, you know, you're a good person, you're a good teammate, all that shit. And I'm like, and he probably doesn't even know what puck support is. And all of a sudden, so I post it, and all of a sudden, within minutes, he sends me one message, and you can see it here. And he, I'm not going to repeat it because I didn't even repeat it on my podcast. He fucking deleted it. it. Says post unavailable. He deleted. He retracted it because it was so fucking bad. And I looked at then I'm like, and then he goes to say, I highly recommend you delete this post. It isn't true and falsely advertised. Get a fucking life, he says to me. And I said, okay, sorry, man. He's like, don't delete or delete it. Don't make shit up. Get a fucking life. I'm like, I didn't, blah, blah. Then he blocks me. So I'm whatever. I'm like looking at it. I'm like, I was a little disappointed. I was, that fucking blew up in my face. I thought this guy was going to be on my podcast. Now he's blocking me. I'm like, fuck. But that's okay. We're on to the next one because I got crazy connections. It doesn't matter. I got great guests. I don't need Zach Cassian, although I would still love to have him on my show so I could talk about this. So I go back and forth and I'm like, am I going to fucking say anything about this or am I not? And so I thought about it and I wasn't going to because, you know, but I, that's just what I do. I like to stir the pot. I, I will tell everybody what's going on. And the reason why I decided to tell people about it is this, is one, I learned something from that. I learned something from that, that, you know, Maybe don't post like that when you're in my position trying to get on a podcast or whatever, because who knows what he's going through that day. And that's my bad. However, my point is, here's a guy that's clearly gone through a lot of shit. He's a hockey player. He sees the shit in the papers every fucking day, man. And then people saying shit about him for the last however many years. So to me, you got to have a little bit thicker skin. And the problem that I had, Tanner, was this. He doesn't know who I am. Probably didn't even look at my profile he probably just read that and was like this guy's a fucking idiot fuck yeah. you da 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 excuse my language anyways he says or he said all that so then i'm like huh i'm like what if i'm like a 17 or 18 year old kid that's a huge zach cassian fan and i was trying to reach out to him thinking it's funny now he tells me to get a fucking life and like that to me um that that to me could be very dangerous to somebody that is also identifying as somebody like Zach Cassian, like a mental, because he does a lot of mental health advocacy work. Um, he's had a story about addiction. Uh, he's got his little foundation for mental health and stuff. So when you're going to be presenting yourself in that way, I feel like maybe you should handle it better. And I will say, like I said on my podcast, I said, Cass, no beef, squash it. I'll fuck, come on the show. I don't care. The only reason I'm talking about it is because I learned something. I hope you can learn something. I hope people listening can learn something from it. Um, maybe now they won't fucking post memes of you. Who knows? I don't know. But maybe I shouldn't have talked about it, but I did. And it is what it is. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm still a huge Zach Cassian fan. Maybe he was having a bad day. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I was, I'll be honest, Kent Tanner, I was playing it off. I was kind of a little bit upset about it. Like, well, actually hurt. I was like, this guy, like, doesn't even, fuck, he's telling me to get a life. Like, fuck, buddy, you wanted, I, I have been getting a life. You should have seen me a fucking year ago. Let's, let's break it down a little bit, though, because there's a little, there's a little more to his reaction than, than what was yep. said because that cast yep. is not exactly sane i say that with all due respect you can come see me if you want bro i don't care um he's got a couple screws loose yeah he's like me right we're similar that way and that's so that's but that's the thing he 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 deleted that message and that's fine but then he still says to go on to get a fucking life so he you know what I mean? It was like he retracted it, but then he still had to throw that jab in there. It was like, fuck. But you should have seen the first message, Chan. It was fucking bad, man. Like, so, <laughs> I'll, that? I'll give you a hopeful story, then. Okay. Um, a few years ago, I got into an internet beef with the town of Cornwall. Ontario. Oh my fucking god! I was just up there, Tanner. I was just had a. I was living in Morrisburg. I fucking left that shithole. So not Morrisburg, Cornwall. There, there's an amazing fighter, a world class fighter that lives in Cornwall, Ontario. His name is Tony Lewis, and he was fighting okay. one of my good friends, Cam O'Connell. So uh, at that point in time, I was running the Spice of Life podcast with my buddy Luke Spicer, and we were in the business of hyping up fights. So I went on there and I said that I don't even know how people, how many people live in Cornwall. I'm pretty sure they fuck their cousins. 
and somehow that made the news. Cor- oh. It was it was in the Cornwall paper. You could pull it up oh. online. That's crazy. The whole town of Cornwall was so angry at me that I said they were cousin fuckers that it blew up. I ended up going on a radio show from Cornwall talking to them about this fight. They made fun of me so bad on that radio show before I went on. I was like, you know what? This is amazing. This is great. And Tony Lewis was so mad at me. And then after the fight, I said, hey, Tony, come on the podcast. And you know what? We're friends today. He's been on multiple times. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's crazy. All because I said cousin fuckers <laughs> makes fucking news. <laughs> right? Well, see, and what if you never called them called them all that? Then then you're not probably not even friends with this guy. Garrett, if I never said anything, I would never talk to him. Yeah. Never. Exactly. So, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what I'm hoping is like it maybe will happen. And, uh, you know, I'm probably going to piss him off more by the fact that I talked about it. But at the same time, like, you know. Um, Just get Kiprios to talk to him. Yeah, Kipper. But I got actually Danny Probert. She messaged me because she's from Windsor and so is he. So she's like, what's up with Cass? What did Cass do? And I haven't. Uh, she knows about it, but we haven't really talked too much about it. But, I mean, it is what it is. At the end of the day, um, who fucking knows, man? Maybe he uh, – I, th- I don't even know who made that meme, and I should look at it. Maybe there's, like, a logo in that meme that those people have been fucking giving and grilling him for a while, and he thought it was one of them. Like, who knows, right? Like, you don't know the whole backstory. I just think that, you know, he could have just ignored – he could have just blocked me, right? He didn't even need to say that shit. If you want to send me the meme, I'll tag him in it. Yeah, I will. I will. He'll love it. He'll love it. Well, what's he going to do? Tell me to get a fucking life? Great. Cool, man. Yeah. yeah. I'll be like, cool, yeah. I didn't care that he said... It wasn't that the get a fucking life. It was the other message that uh, that was like, you know... Oh, you should have screenshotted so. it. That would have been awesome. I would have loved to have read it. I wish he would have. Yeah. I wish I, you know... I. I still know pretty much what it says. I'm not going to repeat it, but I wish I actually had the message to like, I don't even, I wouldn't even post it actually, to be honest. I wouldn't cause it would fucking destroy it. He would get in a lot of shit for it. And that's why he deleted it. And it, it, that's it, all that needs at, to be said. At the end of the day, it is what it is. He probably overreacted to something that was dumb and, and yep. who knows what will happen. I've done it. I fucking do it all the time, man. I do it all the time. I do it. I've done the same shit. Had to delete messages like that. So I'm no better. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I'm not saying that, oh, I'm better. I'm in fucking, I'm probably worse than he is, but I just, I'm hoping that, you know, I, I just basically wanted to say that I learned something from it and maybe he can too. Who knows? Right. Just, you have to be conscious of, of when you're in that position, especially as like a fuck man. He's like a pretty big name NHL player, regardless if he's a superstar or not. He's a big name NHL player that a lot of people either fucking hate or they love. So that's why, um, that's why he has that name and why people are like, he almost, people are like drawn to him. Like remember he played in the world juniors and like, yeah. he just, you know, he was that player. Like he's in your face. He's a, he, yeah, like you said, he's got a couple screws loose and you, you respect that about a guy like that. And, uh, but when it filters into like the fans and shit, like, you know, there's sports, there's supposed to be like a code there when, you know, as an NHL player, when a fan does something like that, you don't, you just don't even get involved. So like, you know, it is, I don't know. So before we, wrap I shouldn't this have posted the fucking meme, whatever, fuck it. Who cares? Uh, uh, before we wrap this up, I want to talk to you real quick about social media. You yeah. Do, you do a lot of posting on social media and I used to do it all the time and I found it got really fucking annoying. Oh, my God. I used to be in fucking 16 internet beasts a day, fucking chirping people off, and they're chirping me off. I used to get death threats, email death threats. I've had fucking cease and desist letters delivered to my house. I I just stopped doing it. for Like, if I do a show, I post a podcast, and that's fucking it. I'll make fun of my friends online. But if you're just some jabroni and I don't really give a flying fuck and I'm just doing yeah. it because I'm bored, I'm not, I don't do it no more. You do a lot of yeah. posting, man. I know. Does it's, it get to you? It's getting to me, bro. It's getting to me, man. It's weighing on me. And uh, I'm sort of trying to get away from Facebook because like, like I probably run right now. I got like six or seven Instagram accounts, three Facebook pages, two websites, fucking two podcasts. And it's just me that does it, everything. However, I'm going to say that I just recently 
about four days ago, got somebody that's taking over all the social media and branding and all that shit and website and all of it. So it's, a, it's good for me. It's going to give me time to focus, but yeah, man, it's exhausting, bro. I don't know how you did it. Like it's, uh, and, and clearly you, you, you stopped for that reason. I mean, it's just, there's not enough time it's in the much. fucking day to deal with everybody. I can't even deal with my own bullshit. I can't deal with everybody else's man. I, if I have, um, but I get a lot of a positive shit on social media. So a lot of my stuff is people reaching out to me, um, that are either struggling or have struggled, um, with similar things that I've gone through. Um, and you know, so for that point, part of it, it's a lot, bro. Like I can't even answer. Like if you, my, my phone's freaking nuts bro like i get like so many messages in a day and every time I do, people are seeing my podcast and sportsnet did an article then the hockey news just did an article and um you know so and some other swift current newspaper did an article a really good one that's Stephen ma out there it's thanks to him too if he ever hears this um but you know so there's sort of people every day like a new person or like multiple yeah. people finding my story every day so then they want to talk and and I'm the type of person that wants to give them an ear because you know I needed an ear and so I've developed a lot of relationships um and it has taken a lot of time it's taken time away from my family and my girlfriend's having a hard time with adjusting yeah. to it and uh I'm trying to find that balance right of you know and I'm getting closer getting into my own place here hopefully in the next couple of weeks and you know you just got to turn it off and like do you turn off your phone at a certain time at night or like so right what now, goes on with you i have this thing on my phone it says sleep well I, it goes at eight o'clock at night do not disturb my phone doesn't go yeah. off um yeah. what what i found was happening is i was actually becoming estranged from my family yeah, with my phone constantly going off, it was taking away from time with my wife, time with my kids, and I was like, you know what, this is fucking dumb. I'm, yeah, I'm my whole life is spent with these people that I've never met face to face. I'm I'm bickering back and forth with people I don't know, and at the end of the day, do I care? No, I'm doing it because it entertains me. Like you, yeah. you're literally <laughs> giving me a laugh. Yeah, is it like, well? This enough. Damn, I'm done. I don't even run my social media shit half the time anymore. Yeah. Like, if you see dumb memes pop up on fucking Instagram, I'm making fun of my buddies. That's me. <laughs> if you see something serious get posted on there, that ain't me. Yeah. I, I, don't, I just, I don't do it. I, I don't. Yeah, you know what? I'm glad that we talked about this um, because it's, you know, maybe it's, there's a reason why it came up. I'm sort of there too, man, is like, there's enough, there's enough for me to focus on. Like I still like, listen, for what I'm doing, Tanner, I need to sort of be on social media and be engaging, but, um, you know, being able to prioritize, I like that. I like turning off. That's something that I've talked about doing is like turning off my phone at a certain time and just, you know, that's it. Like, like, like I'm yawning thinking about it, but like, it's, uh, you know, I, yeah, it's a lot, man. And so thanks for sharing that with me. Cause that just makes me realize even more that I need to fucking just take a step back from the whole um yeah, all the just the banter just the fucking just the just the this you know what i mean it's, it's just a lot of it some of it a lot of the stuff that comes in my mailbox the people i'm talking to is fantastic people that are great people but you, you do get a lot of people just Bullshit. you know the haters and shit and i you know i'm the type of guy that you know i i'm getting better with it i usually just block them now but yeah. you know i was getting into the fucking beefs and shit before but it is what it is i brought it up for a reason because like if I go through your timeline and I'm trying to find something like cocksucker, this motherfucker's posted 75 times since that one came up two minutes ago. God damn it. I can't find it. But I know how time consuming it is. And it, it, it's actually very stressful, especially if you get like a barrage of 10 negative messages. Like I want to kill you. Yeah. All right, man. Like, do no I have doubt. to walk around with a gun? I don't know what to do. <laughs> Well, you're driving around with a shotgun, so you'll be all right. These guys should check themselves before they come out to fucking Saskatchewan. That's for damn sure. Hey, this is a normal thing in Saskatchewan. I'm just making it a fair fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, what was the other thing I wanted to talk to you about? Oh, you had a breakup in your life, and that was with the Hockey Podcast Network. Yeah, I sure did. What happened? I thought that was good. So, yeah, it was. You know what? It was good. So they came. So what happened was is I got a phone call from – um, a very, uh, a pretty big media conglomerate in Canada and I'm still talking with them. I'm, I'm not going to say who or anything, but they asked me, you know, they're like, Hey, uh, we're kind of late to the dance here. Like you said earlier with you, but they said, we're late to the party. 
um, with podcasting, but you know, we're, we want to start a podcast network. Do you want to headline our hockey podcast network? And I was like, fucking rights I do, but I'm in this contract with the hockey podcast network. So I talked to them and uh, I've actually never really told this story in, in, in any sort of detail. Now I'm going to go in huge detail, but I'll tell you the truth because that's just what I do. So I called them and I talked to them and they were like, you know, they were kind of reluctant to let me go because I was the number one show on the network. Yeah. Um, and they, and I would, you know, and whenever they would try to give me grief, I would just send pictures of their SoundCloud and be like, the, you're, you know, the top five episodes, you have a, like 40 podcasts and I'm like the top four or five episodes on your thing. And I'm not trying to be that guy saying an ego or whatever I said, but you know, like, whenever they were trying to like give me grief for this or that, I'm like, you know, like I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. It's working for me. And um, anyways, it was good. They were good. Dylan and Isha were great. Um, the guys at the hockey podcast network and I told them what happened and they were like, uh, you know, let's talk about, I want to talk to you. And they got some new business partners. Yeah. Um, they've now, they've now stepped up with, um, I forget the name of the company. Those guys wanted to have a business meeting with me. Okay. The new partners, that was like one of their priorities. They're like, yeah, we needed to sit down with Brady. They wanted to fucking change my whole show. They wanted to change the name. They didn't like all this shit. I don't like it when people tell me what to do. I was like, go fuck yourselves pretty much. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as I got out of my contract, I went ahead and changed the name of my podcast anyways. <laughs> so I'll give you some advice. I've been yeah. podcasting since I think 2014. Really long time. Um, the reason why networks want to keep you is because you make them money. Yeah. So exactly. essentially you're an employee. Yeah. When you signed, they, they got some shit in there where, oh, we got to release a show on Tuesday and Thursday by 6 p.m. Yes. And it's, you can't say yeah. fuck shit, bitch or cunt. Stay yeah, exactly. Where, stay yeah. right where you are. Yeah. Because you're going to do way better. Yeah, I agree, man. Don't, Thank you for that. I needed, like, honestly, there was a couple times there where, like, I was a little worried. I didn't think that they were going to let me out of the contract. It was only a year anyway. So like we're coming up, but like, then I asked them to take down my, I was like, yo, can you take down like the episode? They're like, no, we're not taking those down. They're staying right where they are. I'm like, okay. I'm like, so now, you know, the last episode that those guys posted, um, I didn't even get a chance to say like, oh, I'm switching. I'm off the network. And so, you know, I'm sure people have figured it out since then. Like I have a pretty, you know, I have a pretty good following right now. Like I have a pretty loyal listener base as far as, you know, and I'm very lucky for that. But yeah, like, you know, they were great, man. They were good. Those guys, they're from Victoria, yeah. um, actually. Um, and, you know, they do their thing. They're not really hockey guys. They, they talk about hockey. They're passionate about it. Um, and they have some great shows like Terry Ryan's on there and him and his dad are coming on my show tomorrow. And, uh, like, you know, so I still talk to them like periodically and I'll pop in and listen to their shows. And, and I told them like, you know, if you want me to talk about promote something like no problem, like I'm this, you know, I'm a, I'm a helpful guy and I'm not trying to burn any bridges, but I wasn't down with them trying to tell me to change the name of my podcast and shit. I was like, yeah, you guys aren't doing that. I'm out. Like you guys are going to fuck with that. Like what's next? <laughs> It's better when you stay independent because you can do anything you want. That's right. People can't fucking do anything. They can't tell me when I need to launch a show, who I can, who I can't, what I can't say. You know, so it's good, man. So when we we look at the grand scheme of podcasting and we look at the biggest show that's ever been on a podcast, anything is Joe Rogan. Yeah, Joe 100%. Rogan. That's signs. why I started a podcast. Is me and Taylor. The night I got out of jail, Taylor bailed me out of jail. That's what we did. Is we watched fucking Elon Musk on Joe Rogan's podcast. Um, that one where he's talking about artificial intelligence and shit, because I laugh, I was so stoned. I laugh when I look at Elon Musk, cause he looks like a fucking alien. I'm like, look at this guy. He's a fucking alien. Like, you know, if you go, if you get so, it's like, yeah, it was hilarious. Anyways, that's what inspired me to start a podcast, but please go on. So, um, so Joe Rogan signs with Spotify. Yeah. The hundred million dollars. He would have been dumb not to is a hundred million bucks for a couple of years is what it is. He, Joe Rogan's not losing any listeners, but first thing that happens problems you can't have this guy on you can't say that you can't do this and he's like you know what fuck you motherfuckers i'm gonna do what i want when i want to do it it's joe rogan yeah. he's the b biggest podcast of yeah. all time so th that's what comes with those kind of things but this is what it is if you if you got a good deal coming up with somebody else Give her, give her it would have to be it, listen tanner it would have to be uh it would have to be right for me and i'll be honest there's no 
I don't really know if there's a network that's ready to take my shit on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've actually, actually, to be honest, I don't even know why I didn't mention this. I started my own fucking network. Oh, you did? I didn't even know that. Yeah, well, I didn't really. I'm the only show on it, but I'm looking for new shows to come on it. It's called the Hot, it's called Puck Support Podcast Network. I fucking changed the Puck Support logo to like the guy, but he doesn't have a head. It's like the fucking podcast mic and shit. I made the logo and everything. But I'm, you know, I've had a couple people that want to start shows and stuff and come on. And again, like, it's not. I'm not mot- I wish I was motivated by money, Tanner. I'm just not, man. Like, fuck. I don't. I'm. I'm really not. Maybe I need to be because I'm so fucking poor. But like, man, like it's. You know, I'm just, I, my whole purpose right now is to just fucking help people talk about the things that people are not talking about and share my experiences. And, and that's it, man. And be real, because like you said, like you see a lot of fake people. And I think that's what people appreciate about my show is that like, I'm a hundred percent fucking real. This is me. You'll see me like this and you'll see me out there. I'm the same fucking person everywhere I go now. And that wasn't always the case, man. And that wasn't always the case with me. You know, I was always something different. I was this, there was that, try to be the jail guy, try to be this, try to be Mr. Drug collector, drug dealer guy. Well, now I'm finally just me and I can be myself and I'm not hiding anything. I don't lie anymore. I don't like, I don't have to lie about anything. I was lying from day one at, when I was sexually abused at five years old. I was lying from then on covering up this story. I was just living this lie. Right. And so then you start to learn that, oh, maybe I'll cover up that. Maybe I'll cover up that. Maybe I'll cover up that. And then sooner or later, it's like, holy fuck, you know, you're sticking a needle in your arm every five minutes and then all of a sudden you're in jail. And, uh, Everything's gone. So, like I said, I'm really, really lucky to be alive, Tanner. But, like, yeah, man, it's it's been a fucking journey. Well, on that note, let's wrap it up. The new podcast name is It's Hockey to Hell and Back. To Hell and Back. Hockey to Hell and Back. Yeah. So, you guys, I believe you can check it out on any podcast app you can get yeah. on your phone, tablet, smart TV. Are you on YouTube? That is honestly, YouTube is where I'm pumping. That's the only place you're going to see the video now. I'm off of Facebook Live because uh, actually because I my son's uh, his bum showed on a video and somebody fucking ratted me out, so I can't even go live on Facebook anymore, um, which is fine. I it's my mistake. I didn't want to have. I just he pulled his pants off when I wasn't looking and whatever, and someone fucking reported it. So now my live fucking video rights have been relinquished. So I fucking hate Facebook. That's why I have a hate on for Facebook right now. I, you won't see me do any live videos because i can't i'm fucking prohibited for 30 days or something but yeah youtube guys check it out um the puck sport podcast network on youtube check that out or hockey to hell and back and uh yeah and i appreciate you having me on tanner it's fucking awesome and seriously thank you to you and uh shout out seriously to sovereign extracts i don't say that lightly like i know i pumped it in the in the intro and shit but i was I'm, I, if it didn't work, if I didn't like it, I'd be like, hey, Tanner, um, didn't do anything for me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fuck come on here and lie. I just wouldn't. Um, same thing goes with uh, anything I do. If um, You know, uh, so shout out to Sovereign. Thank you to you, man, um, because, you know, it's, it's not like you just sent me a couple little things. Like, I know what you did for me, um, and I truly appreciate it, man. And uh, one day, one day somehow, um, it'll all come full circle. There's a couple of things that I'm getting involved in and, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, we can do that. Hey, by the way, did you ever get the mushrooms I sent out to you? Yes, I did get them. They're fantastic. Yes. Okay. I just, okay. I didn't all right. Do you need more of those? Uh, yeah, I do actually. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll send you some out. And if you want to give them to other people or whatever, cause I was sponsored uh, by a company too for microdosing. Um, okay. not the show. He just sponsors me directly and he's actually going to be part of this little doc. Maybe we call him Mr. Mushroom because I don't use his real name and, uh, he might even be part of this little documentary on uh, one of the, uh, major sport networks. Let's just say that that's the hint about mushrooms. It's going to be pretty cool. So guys, make sure you go on to iTunes and leave Brady a rating. It's hockey yeah, to hell and back. Um, go check out the Puck Support Foundation. He's got some little Puck Puck Support Warriors. Maybe I'll be one of them one day. Puck Support Warriors. You warrior. can, man. You want to be? You want to be a fucking Puck Support Warrior? You can. You're fucking fit the bill, man. Just because you don't play hockey, like you know, you could be one, man. So that's the thing. It's we're trying to branch out. Like, yeah, are we all mostly hockey players? Sure, but you know, there's a lot of people that you know coming that are like, oh, well, we're hockey fans, but they're this. Actually, Dave Gilmore. Um, th- sorry, before you go, Doug Gilmore. Okay, Doug Gilmore, he's a friend. He's actually, this is pretty fucking cool, man. 1201 on New Year's Eve. Who do I get a fucking text from? Doug fucking Gilmore. Okay, Hockey Hall of Famer. 
You know what I mean? He's coming back on my show again soon. Well, his brother, Dave, his older brother, Dave, just turned 70. He raised a bunch of money for us. And actually, Dave's son, Brandon, he's a fighter. He's an MMA fighter. So, okay. um, yeah, yeah, he fights out in out here in Ontario and Quebec, I think, too. So I think he's actually got a fight, maybe a fight coming up. I don't know. But, yeah, so maybe that's something, you know, we could talk about, too. Maybe you want to talk to him and uh, get him on a show, maybe. Who knows? But uh, I'd love to see you... Uh, as a fucking puck support warrior man with some fucking I was actually because it's funny I was actually going to ask uh, Adam to get involved too the boogeyman so you know who knows done I'm in okay done consider fucking done you said it man you're in now so also a small known fact Doug Gilmore is my favorite hockey player of all time he's hockey's Michael come King. on really favorite player of all time I didn't know that. Good Uh, to know. Another small little known fact is I actually played fairly high level hockey as a kid. Okay. See, there you go. So I I can be a puck support warrior. I actually just bought my daughter skates today. Me too. (laughs) I bought, I bought my kids skates today too, man. And, and actually, uh, yeah, some people helped us out to do that. It was really nice, but it was, uh, that was great. So we're going to get the kids on the ice here too. And, uh, Man, you're you're in, man. You're a puck support warrior. People can check it out too on Instagram at puck support at puck support warriors. All that shit. Pucksupport.com. Um, look for us everywhere. We've got swag. We got hats. Like this is a puck support hat. Um, we're getting some more made here soon, Tanner. I'll send you one out. Um, I'll send you a shirt and shit too. Like whatever. You, if you just want to have it, to have it. You don't even got to wear it. I, but nah, I'll wear that uh, shit. What are you talking about? I'll wear it. Okay, sick. Make it. I, I need a final shot, fucking shirt or like. Uh, by the way, those shorts, they're badass, man. Those okay. shorts you pulled out in the intro. These ones? Yeah, like, there's no, like, those are all, like, subbed right in there, man. Like, no big fucking, because all those shorts you see, man, they got those patches, and they look bulky. They they look like they don't even, the, some of those patches, they don't even look like they bend properly. Like, you know what I mean? Exactly. So that, it's like having an actual active short on. So it looks sick, man. Good job. Is that, who does, I like it when you say my boy Howie. That's my favorite part of your whole podcast. <laughs> My Not boy Howie, but he's the uh, the owner. Yeah, he's, CEO. he's a beauty. He's he's a beauty, man. Um, let's wrap this motherfucker up. So thank you to my sponsors yeah. again, USG Canada Sovereign Extracts, <laughs> TKO Beards. What else did I have today? On it, uh, Fleshlight. Thank you to everybody that helps the show up. Fleshlight, Fleshlight. Yeah, thank you, Brady, for uh, coming in on short notice. Shoney Carter, I'm gonna find you, motherfucker. Guys, that's the final shot. <laughs>